wanted to ask about your receiver room in particular, obviously losing D-Jack and all he's been through, really rough for him and rough for you guys, but it feels like that's a room with depth that uh, there's a lot of guys probably hungry to, to fill in there. How, I've seen some young guys pop, and we know what Jalen and Jaden can do uh, as well. Yeah, it's hard to lose a guy like DJ because he's one of those guys that was on that Fiesta Bowl team in, in 2020 and knows what the standard is for the kind of offense that we have. But we haven't lost him in terms of his leadership ability. And we do have some really talented young guys and new guys. So for them being able to lean on DJ for you know, experience, and he's caught big catches and big games here. So those guys have really been able to you know, get to know him even better. I know sometimes it's hard when you're the young guy and you have an older guy like that that started, but he's been at all the meetings. He's done a great job being an asset to all of our guys. And a lot of those guys have had opportunities to go in there and make big plays and make mistakes and learn and grow. So it's been a, a great opportunity for them. But djack has been awesome just from his leadership ability since, you know, him going down. What's been your approach to handling the quarterback room with obviously last year we saw Nate being the position coach, but we've seen it the other way. Just how have you tried to manage that, I guess, relationship? Yeah, well, the nice thing for me now that I don't have the role in special teams that I've had the last couple of years, I could go in there for their indie meeting now with Coach Waters and talk to them and see what they like. And, you know, they can come to my office a lot of times now before. And I spent a lot of time before those scrimmages seeing what they like, their, third, their favorite third down, favorite drive starter and things like that. And we all went out with our position groups to go eat dinner and, you know, we timed it out. So they went down to a place in Ankeny, which is where I live. So I got to go down and meet up with them and, you know, was involved in their recruiting processes. So it's awesome during camp because you just get to spend so much time with each other. And uh, it's been fun to get to know, you know, Moberly and some of those new guys. But there's so much reps and there's so much chaos, just kind of like what Coach Haycock was telling you guys. So they get a lot of reps to go out there and learn and grow and fail, kind of like what I was saying. But we stick together through it. But they've done a good job. Do you have to make sure you're putting more time into that group just by the nature of the position? Yeah, absolutely. You, I like to know what they like. I like to know what their favorite stuff is, what they don't like. And the nice thing with Rocco having a year under his belt, he's comfortable telling me, I don't like this, I don't like that. And we're able to talk to them on the headset and stuff now where they can, you know, we have little signals for stuff that they like and don't like, you know, head taps because they can't talk back to us. But we're very, very transparent. We've always met with our quarterbacks on Wednesday night and kind of went through the call sheet and seen what they like, had them rank their favorite plays, favorite shot plays, favorite drive starters. So getting in those guys' ear all the time in between periods. They don't have to do special teams. So I can go over there during Indy while they're doing their stuff and pull one of them aside, you know, if it's whoever, and talk to them about, you know, what their favorite shot play is here. You know, once we get the drive started and we have a chance to go deep, what, what do you want to do? How do you want to start the, do you want to take a shot early? Do you want to get a completion early? So, you know, letting them, you know, feel involved in it and let them own their reps and be able to make choices and dictate how the drive's going to go, I think has allowed them to really spread their wings a little bit. Week and a half away from the opener, give us an idea kind of how that offensive line might look as you get things started against North Dakota. Yeah, we're still shuffling some things around. Obviously, Huff's been an anchor for us. He's played a lot of football here and has given us flexibility to move him around, you know, from center to guard. He started games at tackle here in big games. So we've been able to plug and play a little bit. Tyler Miller got dinged. He's been back, so it was good for him to you know, get a breather and have some other young guys. So we're still shuffling some things around. It'll be relatively similar to probably how we ended last season with being able to move you know, one or two guys around. But I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we played with six or seven linemen in the first week. They've all done a great job and deserve the chance to play. And then an, uh, an idea kind of on the younger guys that have really stuck out to you, maybe playing with the twos or threes yeah. or whatnot in camp. Yeah, I think those young wide receivers have done a a great job with Eskildsen and Overby, like those guys for being true freshmen and coming in. And our offense is pretty hectic a little bit. We move, we shift, we do a lot of motions and move those guys around. And they've done a great job not only understanding what we're doing, but making plays within that. Eli is not necessarily a freshman, but he's done a good job of understanding what we're trying to do. Cooper Alexander's done a good job. He came in in January, but for him to understand and be as physical as he is, is impressive. The Helton twins have done a good job as freshmen being at, going against older guys and, and holding their own. So offensively, we have some really, really talented young guys. Dylan Lee is another guy that he certainly, I forget he's a freshman because he's one of the biggest, strongest guys that we have. But the, the freshmen that we have on this offense are going to be really special. So they're going to do a great job this year. We've heard you talk about playing the video game. Mm -hmm. um, I imagine calling plays in real life is a little bit different than that. How have you learned to call plays for the first time? 
yeah, obviously there's a little bit the ripple effect of a play in the scrimmage and especially versus Coach Haycock. Like that guy's so brilliant at what he does and makes it a lot harder than going against uh, anonymous 13 year old from, you know, wherever California. But uh, it's uh, it's different and you have to the clock moves a lot faster out there than it does in the video game, too. So just trying to stay one, one play ahead and one step ahead and always thinking, you know, next play, next play, next play. It goes really, really, really fast, a lot faster than, you know, as you can imagine, the video game does. But it has been good preparation for me just to kind of work through like two minute stuff and clock stuff and how that works. So it's been fun to do that. But it feels like someone's got a fast forward button on the clock out there in the stadium. Last week, talking with Rocco and Coach Waters, they mentioned that you're going to be the one selecting the offensive play, but Waters will be the one communicating it through the headset to Rocco on the field. Um, why is that the strategy that you guys decided to select as an offense this year? Yeah, so me and Jake sit next to each other in the box. And I was thinking, you know, with just me not being the quarterback's coach, like he's in, he meets with those guys a lot more. And me standing next to him is like, if there, there's things that he knows that I might not necessarily know just with sitting next to him in the meetings. And I give, you know, a lot of the stuff of what we say in general is just like situational reminders. Like we try not to overload the quarterbacks anyways with too much, but it's really just like a click of a button and he can give little reminders too. And I can tell him to Jake and he can tell him too, but I could really like stay focused on like the big picture stuff and still be able to talk to Jake and have him relay it to the quarterbacks. And he's on a different channel, you know, with those guys too. So I think I did it in the spring and liked it. And just with him being the quarterbacks coach and now with, it was different because Jake was going to be on the field before they switched like the countable coaches rule. So now with that being changed, we're allowed, you know, now we can have Kyle down on the field with the quarterback. So that allowed me to bring Jake upstairs. And with Jake being upstairs, it was like, you know, he coaches a quarterback, so just have him talk to him. Like, you know, we could do it together a little bit, but just one less thing, you know, I have to worry about a little bit. So it's been, it's been nice. No. No, it, it goes out at 15 seconds. So like I said, we're, we did a lot of research with it in the off season, talking to NFL coaches that have used it. And we found that less is more. They have told me that less is more. And I think when I did it in the spring, you know, it's so easy to just see the play and think big picture, but you give them all these tips and reminders. Next thing you know, you feel like you paralyze that guy a little bit. And it's the last thing that we want. We want him to go out there and play with what he sees. And he, Rocco's so instinctual and sees the field so well. I just, for us, it's just little reminders here, you know, make sure, you know, throw the ball away. It's touchdown, check down, those kind of situations. Like, can't take a sack here, those kind of two minute drill type situations, stuff, little reminders, you know, don't forget the back, those kind of stuff. So, it's probably not as big of a thing as most people think. You've talked plenty about the connectedness of the tight end room. How have you seen that group sort of holistically develop? Yeah, I think where I've become really proud of those guys is just the accountability that they have within the room and how competitive it, it is and just the detail and the note taking and the accountability they come in with a bunch for we have a lot of experience in there now but they come in with questions every day and they're just trying to really like be as detailed as they can and so many people play in there where it's kind of it kind of reminds me of like when I was the wide receiver GA here and those guys can kind of clown on each other and hold each other accountable it's a very much like a brotherhood and everybody's got thick skin in there and they get after me too and it allows us to be really really transparent I think with each other where we can be really honest and it allows us to have worked through hard times faster and come back and know that it's not personal and we could coach each other hard because we have a high standard in there and we're going to have to be really good in that room for our offense to be better. So it's been fun. Coach, it feels to me like Steve-O might be a little bit of an underappreciated player with the public, but within the locker room, what, what's the appreciation level for a guy like Steve-O Klotz? Yeah, um, it's hard to put into words kind of what he means to our offense. Like I think we're a different offense when he's not – on the field and he was hurt a couple games last year and I think you saw our offense change a little bit just the attitude that he has the selflessness that he has to do whatever it takes and he can make big catches like you saw that last year but his ability to win you know at the point of contact and space and at the line of scrimmage is something that's really hard to teach and I love that he wears 49 like we talked about him changing to wore number eight in high school and I think he kind of likes being like the last eligible number you know, before if you get to like the O-lineman, just 49 or something gritty about that number where he can go out there and lead by example and, you know, run through a window and be able to be physical and set the tone. So when he's not able to, to practice and I know what he could do, so we'd be able to take some reps off of him just to, you know, protect him physically a little bit. But 
I hate when he's not in the game because I think he's just such a difference maker for our football team with what he can do. They're hard to find. Steve O'Klotzes are hard to find. Coach, you referenced it a little bit earlier, what Coach Haycock was expanding on with the chaos that Coach Campbell likes to create. Is it fun to watch true yeah. freshmen encounter that? Because A, if they you know, do, do something bad, you've got something to teach. But also if they do something good, it's like, oh, well, we can be good in that situation. We can build off that. You know, the, it, There's really nothing but learning in those situations. Yeah, and it's, it's chaotic for everybody. Like I'd love to tell you, like the other day was nuts. And it was great, and it was a lot of fun, but you really got to, like, keep your knees bent. So to see, like, the freshmen be able to, to work through it and understand it, like, Eskildson made a great play on, like, a signal play. It wasn't on our wristband in a man situation on a two-minute where he got vertical and created a rub in a period that we weren't necessarily supposed to have. But, like, the awareness for him to understand what we were trying to get out of the play, knowing he's not going to get the ball. We just need him to get vertical and create a rub for the tight end was awesome to see. But, like, when... We do sudden change situations at practice. I think it really just tests everybody's like focus and where your attention span is. And like, as soon as you think that you're taking a rep off, like Haycock's blitz in the house, and it's going to be second and long or third and long fast. Like, you better show up and be ready to go, or you're, it's going to it's going to be a bad situation for you. So you better show up every day, or you're going to get exposed by somebody in the building, defensive player, defensive staff the head coach it's like you got to be prepared for any and all situations because at the drop of a hat it could go it could go sideways fast which is fun but you gotta <laughs> it gets crazy Raymer was in here earlier and he said he didn't feel like he started camp well because he was in his head but that has since changed i guess what have you seen before and after yeah the growth that he's had from uh, the first part of fall camp until now I think it just took him a little while to, to – because he was coming off a little bit of an injury and it wasn't serious, but it's hard. And even, like, as a play caller sometimes, like, to just get, like, your confidence back. And especially, like like I said, the tight end room is really competitive. We have so many great players on the offense and there's so many great players on the defense. If you don't feel at your best sometimes, it can be easy, especially for a young guy to – for anybody to get in your head a little bit and, you know, self-doubt creeps into everybody. And for him to come back and just work through stuff and, you know, for me to remind him just who he is and – why he fell in the love, like fell in love with the game of football, and it's no different than it was for him in high school than it is now. And just go out there and have fun, and don't think so much, and don't try to be perfect. You know, like he did last year when he came in, there was no expectations, and he just played and understood it and had fun. It shouldn't be any different now. He's just 20 pounds heavier. He's prepared more. He's, but don't overthink too much. We all have your back in there. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna coach you hard. We're gonna love you up, and you're gonna get yelled at, and you're gonna wake up, and it's gonna be fine. And come in and make plays and fail and learn and grow and you know being able to build confidence through failure is a tough tool but it's a good it's a good deal for me it's a good deal for him and it's been a good growth journey through fall camp for all of us to, to be at our best especially him is that type of situation amplified for a guy like him who's still very young but now has expectations after what he did last year yeah I, I think it is and it can be easy, especially like this time of the year where everybody's talking about what the expectations are and the people you have that, that come back. Like, what does that really mean? You know, like it doesn't mean a, a lot. And if all your focus is on like what the expectation or the potential is, like you're going to lose track of like what your process is that got you there to be successful. And when that happens, like you just got to refine your focus and really lean into, you know, what's got you here, who you are, what your foundation is as a football player, what your foundation as a coach is, because that's always – going to get tested regardless if you're a sophomore, a redshirt freshman, a true freshman, a senior. I've seen it, you know, when Charlie was here as a, a redshirt senior and Chase when he was like a super senior. So those moments come and it, football is such like a cutthroat sport and it's so competitive and there's so much, it's such an emotional game also. It can be, it can be hard to manage that for anybody, for me, for, for him. So just remembering what his process is and understanding like, you know, we just got to get better every day and not to overthink it and just worry one rep at a time and one step at a time and brick by brick letting it build itself back. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, guys.